All right, you guys. I'm gonna show you a little bit my typical stuff. I'm trying not to make it too run of the mill, but um, this time I'm gonna show you, I guess, how and why you should be able to do some of this stuff in um, in coats and everything else, and um, coats and hats and boots or whatever. And um, trying to show you how it's no matter what you're wearing, it's centered on this right here. Like I can actually be standing somewhere and just giving you a speech like some other people do in a fancy um, yoga room and mat. But um, yeah, there's other um, stuff that I'd like to see you catch on, you know, with people in the um, communities not too far from me and even if you want to call it ghetto yoga or whatever too, or sh street yoga, but using the cir circumstances you have, no matter how hot or cold it is, chance to get outside and get some air, you can do this in coats and hats and boots. And I'd rather have boots because you can ruin a good set of tennis shoes, a pair of boots that, who gives a shit how they look, I mean, they get screwed up every once in a while. And Maybe you can invent some kind of a thing, put a piece of cardboard under your boots if you've got good boots or shoes you don't want to screw up. But uh, if you're outside doing some work anyway, unlike other people's yoga, I'm trying to get people in the habit of, instead of, you know, you're sitting around watching TV or maybe you're on your couch and you might want to have your feet together like this watching TV. But I'm trying to make mine. It's centered, centered around something like this, a version of a crow's pose and that you can get up. And a lot of stuff that I'm not um, putting in videos is... Um, it looks too repetitive, but you might want to do a whole bunch of this because you want to be in the habit of being able to get up gracefully like this. But it's centered on this and like a downward dog thing. It don't have to be total downward dog. Just go into your feet like this or like this. But there's a sense of relief you're feeling. Even say if you're going in the refrigerator, going after something, just bending over like this. You got to be looking for the relationships there. You know what I mean? Um, going for a crow's pose to come up and down like this, but then when you're bending like this. Uh, some You don't have to go through as nearly as much pain as some people say to get this shit done. That's what I'm trying to show people. And uh, I can say in some cases, if you're feeling too much pain in the wrong places, something's wrong. Some of this basic stuff, you should be feeling a sense of relief. And then working off of that, because trying to show you that some of the basic split can be just a different version of downward dog. So you're going like this, there's a sense of relief. Then you're going down like this, right? But then you're doing a version of this. This is nothing more than a downward dog because when you're going like this, you're kind of bending back a little bit like this. And before you can do the split with your... Uh, straight up and putting your hands in here like I do sometimes uh, put your you notice you're gonna feel a sense of relief if you get this far and put your head almost to the ground if you're wearing a hat that's all the better but they say if it's too cold you're not supposed to stretch when it's cold but then you do a little run up running around up and down steps or jump up and down but then when you just like this, even do push-ups like this and start to bend like this and put your head. And again, this one, not really feeling pain right now unless I go too far too fast. You're feeling a sense of relief. Then your actually flexibility increases. And you got to start over all day and don't wear anything too tight that you can rip or get in your way. Instead of forcing yourself to go like this too early. See, I do this and bring myself down. But yet do more of this. When you go and put your head closer down or do a push-up, you're feeling a sense of relief. Then you just get back up. Say you don't want to go any further. Get back up and do it again. And just go like this. And your feet will go a little farther. You feel a little bit of pain. That's okay. But you don't really need to feel as much pain as people say in a lot of cases maybe at first but goes away but go for the feeling of relief first you know 
you don't really have to be as flexible as everybody else. It just starts, I started out where I didn't care, you know, just a little better than I was, and then I started a little bit at a time. But a lot of times every day you got to start over. But here it goes, your head, just put your head down, you know. It's a hoodie under this coat. I always want to show people getting a habit. You can do this in coats and hats and everything, and you want to take your coat and hat off. Then once you you sit there on your head for a little while and you're feeling a sense of relief, right? Then you're gradually moving back. You can do something like this or just flat-handed. But then I kind of like to do it like this because you do knuckle push-ups anyway. Then you go like this a little bit, a little off a little bit like a clock technique, 12 o'clock, um, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Then if you want to get to about 3 o'clock, that's almost where your feet are over here. But then cross over, cross over. Then you want to gradually sit yourself down and move back, go back forward again, move back, do that a couple of times. When you're first starting out, you might be feeling some pain in your hips. That's why I'm telling some of you guys that start right out, you, if you feel some pain in the wrong place in the hip, get right out of it. And I'm saying, oh yeah, one of my reasons you're doing this in boots instead of tennis shoes, because watch, watch my feet right here. Say you want to escape. You're not ready for it. You're going to fuck up your hip or something. I'm going to take this hat off for now. But uh, watch my feet. Like that. Like that. And then the heel. Like that. Toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. You can put yourself back down too. Toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, and toe, heel. Then I'm out this far, right? Sway yourself over to the left, the right. And then watch, we'll see. Toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. Then you're at a downward dog again, right? Then you come back up. Then you do a little squat this way. Bring it back into kind of like a crow's pose. Press out with your elbows. That's why I do this so much. It lean forward and lean back. Because you want to get in the habit of, you know, you're... Um, get in the habit of crawling. You might want to crawl away real fast. That's why I recommend wearing knee pads. Because uh, I worked in a lot of places where I wore knee pads whether I'm required to or not, because you step down and you will kneel down to pick up an object, you may want to go down on that knee to go get something rather than rip your back in some cases. Or if you got to crawl to get something or sit on both knees, you don't know what you're doing, don't fuck up your best pairs of pants, especially if you're working someplace that's not a uniform. you got a favorite pair of pants, and you fuck them all up and all that. It's another reason, you know, that... Uh, Sit like this for a while and be in a habit of getting up and then back down. And See, it's just like crawling, crawling away from something. The way things are these days, uh, you never know where you might be at. In a workplace or in a supermarket, you may have, to duck and, may have to duck and cover and crawl away real fast. Get down and do some fast crawling, you know what I'm saying? And then be able to get up and run. Get up and run with your head low, you know what I'm saying? Uh... Don't fucking wait until there's a crisis, you know what I mean? Uh, but, um, yeah, that's how you do it. <coughs> okay. And then that's about it. Then once you, uh, get that far like this, you, we go try it again. Even like this, you go down to your head. Even sit like this. You can venture with bringing one hand out, see? Then you go forward, back, like that. And see, look how much further you get. Then you put your hands out like this even. And see. Then you can feel that, like kind of stretching almost like a bungee cord there. 
then if you don't want to get up all at once like I'm able to do, heel toe, heel toe, then you can eventually get up just like this. A little faster, you know what I'm saying? But say if you're outside passing the time and it ain't real frigid cold, you're not really supposed to stretch out in the cold, they say you can uh, mess yourself up. But if it's like medium cold like that, you get some blood moving or whatever. I mean, I did this when I was wearing a um, uniform vest for a, a charity for the kids and for the hungry. I have a, one of my older videos today and it's good. I want to do an updated one, but the, the weather was changing here and here and there, and we had some cold days out there. I was out there all day, but anyway, uh, how you do it, you know what I mean? There's a, a lot of different uh, ways you can do it, but even you sit like this, like for a pretty long time, lean as far, far as, as you can, your toes are still make contact, but then say I could take these stiff boots and go like this, and then it's pushing that out. But the trouble with the yoga people in their crow's pose, I can sit down on one hand, when you're not wearing a sweater or a coat, you notice your elbows will be digging. Even though some of our thigh muscles, there's a pretty good bit amount of muscle there. Uh, your elbows dig into that and you're going to be feeling that if you have slightly sharper elbows. And uh, it's kind of hard, but you just kind of want to get in the habit of opening up uh, the hips and that. But see, I can do it. Look, I can stand this much. Get the shakes a little bit, but... Say when you have a stiff pair of boots, a steel toe or not steel toe, instead of, of uh, boots or shoes that cave, you got that tip of boots that you can stand. Actually, when you're standing and touching the tip of the boots like this, I got a good bit of weight going on here. And, uh, and I notice uh, some of us with ponytails, whether we're dudes or chicks, that ponytail hanging, you might want to tie something around it that has a little bit of weight to it, you know, little extra things to tie back because that weight of that ponytail goes down when you're when you're doing some kind of downward dog or something and gives you the idea that you're stretching directly a certain way. Uh, there's something about it that amplifies the power, you know what I mean? Uh, but then, you know, uh, version of this here is, let me get back here, this right here. See, even if you're doing it on your hands, or like this. But anyway, I think you get it. That's enough for today.